Hello everybody, my name is Jared Jaramillo. I'm a mechanical engineering senior, class of 2021 from Tufts University. And over the course of the last few months, I've been working with my professor and research advisor, Chris Rogers, to achieve a pretty straightforward goal. That's my high-end LiDAR sensor on an EV3, put it into a room and have it map out whatever's going on in that room. So what I've created is a wireless ladder control system and interface that takes in user inputs in order to collect data, calculate the distance that's been moved after being ordered to move around, plots that data and compares it to previous iterations and allows for both rotation and linear movement of the EV3 so the user can explore whatever part of the environment they consider to be important. Here I'll show you a very quick demo of the system in action. At the very beginning, after SSHing into the EV3 and initializing a connection to the LiDAR, the LiDAR begins spinning and awaits for a request to grab a certain number of points, 1,000 points for example. It collects and processes that data, converts it into Cartesian coordinates that can then be plotted onto my computer so that I can see the local environment that the LiDAR is in. I can then input a command to move it. And once it completes its move, I prompt it to collect another thousand points so that I can once again see if there's been any significant changes in the environment. Here we can see the second plot. Essentially what's happened is with the second collection of data, the LiDAR overlays that on the original one, and we can see the changes in the relative environment due to its movement. And this allows us to see things that the LiDAR may not have initially seen due to obstacles obstructing its view. Here's a more controlled example where we see the LiDAR in a more secluded environment, just a U-shaped corridor with a wall between the corridors. On the left, as the LiDAR takes its first set of data, and it can essentially tell that it's surrounded by walls on three sides and that there seems to be a little bit more of an opening if it were to move forward 30 or 35 centimeters. So on the image on the right, you can see that the LiDAR has moved forward. And when we plot those points after the LiDAR collects data for the second time, we can now see that with one less obstruction in the way, there seems to be another space to explore that we can then direct the LiDAR to. But how does this all work? Essentially, there are three primary components that work within this entire system. The main control interface, in this case, just my PC running the main program, the EV3 and the LiDAR. My PC contains the main running program, main run, and the EV3 contains two primary scripts that my PC prompts to run. The first one, run EV3, which controls the motion of the EV3, and the second one, run LiDAR, which contains all the communication protocols for the LiDAR. There's also a temporary current data CSV file, and this is where all of the data the LiDAR collects is saved into and then accessed by my PC. Essentially, the way the system works, starting from the very beginning, is my PC tells the EV3 to move or to start the LiDAR after initiating the SSH connection. The EV3 then initiates communication with the LiDAR through terminal commands, in which we can request a certain number of points to be collected. Once the LiDAR collects those points, all that data is mentioned previously is saved to the current data file. The LiDAR takes data in polar coordinates, so the EV3 will convert all of those into X and Y coordinates as well. All four of those points, angle, distance, X coordinate and Y coordinate will be saved to the current data file, which I can then wirelessly SCP onto my computer. So I can process the data a little bit more and plot it on the screen in case we take a look at the data in the local environment and we want to move to a specific location to explore a little bit more. While the system is likely possible with a variety of LiDAR sensors as long as the communication protocols can be established, I've been working primarily and written custom code for the RP LiDAR A2M8 360 degree laser scanner by SlamTech, which you can find online in order. And of course, the LEGO EV3 Mindstorms is the primary robotics platform that I've been using since it already provided a simple way to control the movement of the LiDAR without having to necessarily build a robot from scratch. There are a lot of different possibilities for this system that I've written and a lot of different directions that I can potentially go into. I am planning on making this my undergraduate thesis in my last semester at Tufts University. Since I am using a LEGO Mindstorms kit, the path for educational robotics is always there, potentially being a more advanced education module in which higher level students, for example, learn about serial communication and control. Personally, I think I'm very excited by the idea of developing the software much farther and creating an autonomous exploration system based on machine learning, where rather than take in and wait for user inputs, 
The ladder can just be placed into any environment, detect and recognize its surroundings, and then begin exploring the entire space in order to completely map a large area. But it's still a relatively young project in a lot of different directions that I can go in. So if you have any feedback on potential uses for this system, absolutely reach out to me and I'd appreciate listening to your feedback on anything that you've heard today. Thank you so much for listening to what I've been building over the course of the last few months. Thank you.